Hello, this is Vet Talk, and I'm your host, Sergeant Gonzalo Duran. Our, our executive producers are JM Empire Media and Vero G Productions. I'd like to thank this episode's sponsor, Fashion Has Hearts. This is one of their shirts. They put veterans and artists together to make art like this. And this particular shirt is dedicated to helping regarding the burn pits and the pack tag. So we are keep informed and get that information out there. Today's honored guest is Laura Levine Potato from Four Bronx Project. Laura, thank you for being here today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So, Four Bronx Project, how did that come about? So, I am the daughter of a disabled veteran. Uh, my father served his country very proudly in the Marine Corps. Um, hoorah, right? Hoorah. <laughs> um, and so, as a child, I actually only, from a certain age, you know, I had my dad until I was about, about six or seven. And then PTSD came, uh, mental illness, addiction. And so from a s certain point in time in my childhood, every time I would see my dad would be in a VA psychiatric facility or like a Christmas event that, you know, the Legion would put together or something like that. So, you know, if it wasn't for people that did those sorts of things, I wouldn't have memories with my father for the holidays and all year round. So that's why it just hits me you know, my nonprofit and the work I do just hits me on a different level. Um, I feel now that I'm in a position to give back, um, it's become my life's mission to do so. And how long have you been active? So I have been active in the community for about three years now. I made it official with the Four Bronx Project in 2022 um, and joined forces with a local um, nonprofit. So we've been doing a lot of work redirecting resources and services to the people of the Bronx. So basically, uh, officially one year anniversary now. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I mean, really the work has been, you know, it was just me doing it for like, you know, out of my car, but um, officially for one year. So now when you started from on your car now to where you are, official organization, where do you see yourself? Have you grown so far? We definitely have grown. Um, we get recognized for many things that we do. Um, you know, it's very important for me in regards to the veterans. You know, I, I personally feel that People come out of the woodworks around Veterans Day. I don't know if you'd agree or disagree with that. Um, and they want to support the vets and do events, but what about the rest of the year? Um, so I really started just something very simple, just lunch with a vet. So what happens is we work with the James J. Peters VA Hospital um, in Kingsbridge, and we get people to sponsor a vet. And, you know, we have lunch, and you can adopt a vet for lunch. I met you there, right? There you go. And you come to like a local restaurant and like we give you like lunch and um, we also do like some free raffles and get sweaters and boots and some, you know, some really cool prizes. So the vets love it. They come by the truckload. They love it. And, um, well, you know, I, I have, you know, I have first first hand knowledge and, you you know, I do. I wouldn't say it's um, too obvious for like the regular people because I like to think that people are veteran friendly. It just they may not come about it so regularly. You know, but having organizations like yours, you know, getting the community involved, I believe is one of the ways that we can get a real community centric with the veterans and the community. Right. And I also feel that like, you know, people want to get involved, but they don't necessarily have the time or the means or there's some, you know, life is hectic, right? So my ultimate goal in this is to create a platform where people can give back. You know, I kind of want to just take a step back and let the Four Bronx Project run itself and just create a network where people want to volunteer and there's events, you know, and like just there's your opportunity. Just take it and, and go with it and make a difference in your community. Now, you mentioned one of the projects already, you know, um, sponsoring veteran and having a meal, getting to know them. Is there any other projects that you're working on presently? So throughout the year, we do clothing drives. We redirect. Um, I can't even count how many clothing drives. I have a 10-foot a box truck, so now Four Bronx has become, a mo has become mobile. So we can take the donations to the different shelters and drop off. Because right now, we're doing this, it's, you know, it's nighttime right now. There are people in the borough of the Bronx that A, don't have something to eat, and B, they don't have a pair of shoes, they don't have a coat. And for me, that's just not acceptable. So I do my part, and the Four Bronx, we do our part to... Uh, combat that and, and now that we're in the winter season this is mo this is really important right now what about some future aspects that you guys are looking into doing so um you know i, I want to say cause there's, how do we put everything into one little thing but we do um countless drives we do the veterans lunches uh we do um 
we do uh, Riverdale Pride. I'm one of the founders of that. Um, very much into inclusion and creating a community where everyone are wel everyone feels welcome. Um, and just different things. We we did a carnival and a kids shelter on the Grand Concourse. So people donated their secondhand stuffed animals. We retagged them and we had carnival games and a bounce house and the kids went nuts face painting. So it's just giving Bronx people and children, you know, some sort of fun and like necessities. Yes, we all need, you know, the coats, the shoes, the hats. That's basic human rights. But also like provide, you know, residents of the shelters with these experiences that they can share with their kids, you know. Um, you know, Christmas is coming up. We're, do we're actively doing a toy drive. We have pledged to sponsor 400 Bronx kids. We're well on our way to that goal. So it's just, it's really exciting. It really, really is exciting. Um, 2024, I do want to do a uh, workshop for vets um, out of my office space where we just let them know the resources that are available to them because many, maybe they don't know, so... Well, any way that we can help, I'll be happy to do that. Thank any you. Way we can. And for the viewers out there, um, so just to be clear, you don't just work on the veterans um, dynamic. You also work for the community. The children, entire, family. everything, the entire community. Um, for example, a friend of mine, her name, um, the name of the company is Cleaning Wand. She was doing a job in Mount Vernon. Um, a shoe company was going out of business, and she was going to do a disposal job, you know, get paid a lot of money for it. But she said, no, let me be a community ag advocate. And she called me and we redirected over 800 pairs of women's formal shoes to young women in the Bronx so that they would have a pair of shoes to go to prom. So it's just people being community advocates because I can't do this myself. It's getting that call and redirecting. So, so now for the people that want to get involved in what you're doing, the work and maybe reach out for donations or resources how would they go about reaching out to so you? you can find um, our web page it's 505bx.org slash for Bronx project um, you can see everything there the donation link is there my Instagram is at the number four Bronx project um, and you can email me Laura for Bronx at gmail.com now you also have different hats that you wear not only as the CEO or excuse me founder of the four, director director of for Bronx project but you also have your own podcast. I do have my own podcast. So um, we do the podcast um, every week in my office space. We, you know, I just feel like in the Bronx, um, you know, I grew up with grandparents and, you know, we didn't have much. And like many Bronx families, there were times when, you know, food was not secure and, you know, payday was Friday. And a lot of people are going through that currently. It's really, really rough out there. And so I just feel like if you're not famous, if you're not rich, like, and you die, it's like you never lived. You have no memory. And I just couldn't let that happen to, you know, the memory of my grandparents. And I just wanted to open the table and open the platform and make it less clicky and just an open space where people can come and share their story and have their story documented for the community to know and for people to see. Okay. So now that's beautiful. I mean, is there any... Um, guests that you've had recently that really touched you in, in, a, in a way that you didn't think that was going to happen? Um, we get a lot. We do get a lot of guests. I don't want to play favorites because all our guests course. are important and um, we love their stories. But yes, um, I will say we had um, the owner of Lloyd's Carrot Cake on, um, which is a Bronx staple um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in the Riverdale. I mean, the entire borough, but everyone knows and loves Lloyd's. Uh, but just the love story of her parents who now have both passed was really it, it kind of like it, there was a moment there so it was just a really really beautiful um, love story and story of per perseverance and family you know, for those that may not know i believe it's right across from van Cortlin park yes and it's a i believe an orange uh banner with a rabbit and a carrot cake or something like no or, no or, so it's or, across from the tortoise and the hare statue okay there we go that's something and then it has a bright orange sign and it has a dancing carrot a dancing carrot. There we go. Yes. I mixed them up. <laughs> <A dancing carrot. laughs> but you were on your way. Rabbit, oh, rabbits like carrots. Yeah. So, you know. Um, so is there any other guests that you've had that you would want to mention or maybe looking for more guests that you might want to have? You know, I really, I open it. I really want to um, let anybody have the ability to come in and tell their story. So if you want to tell your story, you can reach out to me at Laura, the number four Bronx at gmail.com and we'll work with you to get, um, to get you on. For me, the Bronx has been for a very long time a forgotten about borough. We've always been the last to be selected for things and the last to receive things and have opportunities. So I think now we're on our way 
to we've turned that around and the Bronx is definitely on the rise. Would you agree? I've always agreed on that. And, and you know, one of the 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 work that I, the work that I've always tried to do is be, give a good impression of the Bronx and show that we have so many beautiful things from the green spaces that we have to the, the community members that are doing outstanding work to example, clear example right here. And um, you know, you know, not only Yankee Stadium we have, we have the Botanical Gardens, oh. you know, education, we have Fordham University, et cetera. Hostess is a great school. The Bronx school. Zoo. The Bronx Zoo. I think, uh, I think one of the other, I mean, Japan beat it so far, but it used to be the third largest zoo, now it's the fourth largest zoo in the world. Right. You know, and a lot of the ecological stuff going on in the Western Hemisphere is coming from the Botanical Gardens that we have, which right. a lot of people don't know about. No, it's, it's beautiful, and it's like the 50-year anniversary of hip-hop, so the Bronx is celebrating that this year. It's like really, really exciting. Yeah, I've seen Fat Joe come out from a lot of different places the last couple of months. Right. And, uh, you know, and, you know, uh, honoring the 50, 50th anniversary, which is beautiful. And other, other rappers and I think and for a long time there's been so much culture that, you know, has gone under unappreciated. And I think now it's like the Bronx is really, I, I do believe that the Bronx is in a state of renaissance. And we are definitely on the way to, I mean, we always were the best borough, but <laughs> we're on our way to, um, you know. BX in the house. Always BX. So now let's go back to um, you know you know vet talk is you know is you know, we try to put in a uh, veteran component to this and you know you shared your background with right. us already um, you know is there any other stories that you want to share from I do family? so my dad had heart surgery at James J Peters um, this is this must have been like when I was like 16 so we'll say 13 14 years ago and he was in the bed he couldn't move and he's like, Laura, you need to help me. So I was like, yeah, dad, whatever. What do you need? Like, you need apple juice? What is it? So any veteran now, when I say the story, they're going to laugh. He goes, I need a cigarette. So I'm like, <laughs> no. dad, you just had heart surgery. <laughs> You're like cut open. Like, this is insane. He's mm -hmm. like, we have to go get a cigarette. So I'm like, okay. So we are literally, you know, I'm pushing him in the wheelchair and like the smoking hut. I don't know if it's still there, but it was down in the, the first floor they of the took hospital. It yeah, they, they took it out. So back then, so we're going on our way and we see a veteran who's pulling himself um, in a wheelchair on the railing on the side. He doesn't have a leg, he's, he only has one leg. And he's pulling himself and my dad's like, where are you going, soldier? He goes, I'm going to have a cigarette. So my dad says, Laura, hold my IV, I'm gonna push him. So I'm like, dad, you just had surgery, this is insane. Like I'm pushing you, now you're gonna get up and push this guy like you just had surgery. And it took us about four hours to go up and down and they smoked about a pack of cigarettes together um, and when I came up I said dad I just don't understand like why would you do this and he said you're not a veteran so you don't understand this but when you're a veteran you truly truly believe that you never leave your brothers and sisters behind and that's the man my father is and um, you know I think that's a nice story. It's a simple story. It's a little funny, but it's true, right? Like, yeah, it's well, of course, you know, you know. So that always resonated with me. Um, and also, my dad taught me. It doesn't matter if I'm in a moving vehicle. If you see the if you see the American flag on the floor, you got to pick it up, fold it, treat it with respect. And so I, I do carry that with me. There's things as a child of someone in the military or veteran. There's just things that we learn. Um, so I do carry them with me. Well, patriotism, you know, didn't yes. fall far from the tree. Um, and then also, you know, the memories of your father coming out. Do you see there as a stigma that there's still... I do. The, I think it's getting better now um, because I know my dad, you know, he was homeless for a little while when I was a kid, uh, mental illness, addiction. And as a kid, you know, in the 90s, it's not... This wasn't spoken about, like mental illness, PTSD. We weren't as open as we are now. And so I wish that there were services available to him back then at this capacity that maybe it would have been a different outcome. But he's doing he's doing very well now. He lives in Massachusetts and he's very he finds that he's very happy up there. You know, the 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 stigma that's that's there we're very fortunate that in the time that we're in right now, there's so many organizations. Um, there's been funding for many years for a lot of things that's going on. But at the same time, we got to think about there's the projects, but how do we get the people to that? How do we get the people to want to go to the, that? You know, you know, because they don't know what's going to happen to them. Like if you're, like for example, if you're at NYPD or in the military right now, and you say you have PTSD, that could be cause for you to to be removed or. Um, you know, uh, discharged medically from the military, or individuals that you know 
how did, you know, the PACT Act was only recently approved um, to get individuals from Camp Lejeune that may have been contaminated from there or the burn pits. You know, a lot of those veterans didn't receive the services that they needed back then or may have not known about it or may have felt uncomfortable going for it. Right. And now, you know, we're in a position, you know, right here, you know, your podcast and the work that you're doing is to get that information out right. there. My dad was in Camp Lejeune. Um, you know, I would love to have somebody on the podcast that can maybe inform us more of it because I'm not really, you know, that aware of it, to be honest with you, so I don't really feel that I can comment on that, but I do think that we really need to take care of our veterans yeah. better. I think collectively we need to take care of them, so that's... You know, and, and with, uh, with a lot of things that's going on, um, you know, the, the current situations nationally, the, the, um, the incidents going on, you know, let's say uh, with the Hamas and the Israel things going on, uh, it's a triggering point for a lot of people, a lot of veterans. Uh, some some want to go uh, defend their country. Some may be looking at it as an uh, issue that be coming up. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the war in Iraq and Afghanistan is, is not that far away. You know, 9-11 was, mm -hmm. you know, only uh, a decade ago. Um, you know, for us as, you know, service providers working with the VAs, trying to get them, um, you know, if you pick that from the, the larger aspect, and now we're sitting here talking about the work that we're doing with them, sitting down with the veteran, eating a meal, conversing, telling them we know and we care about what you've done, brings, I, I know for myself, going to one of your events has brought joy to me, seeing a veterans coming together. You know, most of the time when you have a group of veterans, we're gonna tell the war stories, we're gonna talk about stuff like that. Um, but at the same time, we're gonna say, look, this community just came together to, to make us happy, give us a, a that's moment. That's really where I, that's the extent of what I do. I just wanna make the veterans happy um, in my community. And um, they, you know, I know they really come for the free raffles. We give scratch offs. And I want can, a hat that day. I think. You want a hat, that's why they come. I actually had them over for lunch and I didn't have a raffle and I almost like, they were not happy. So the VA hospital is actually gonna open a community room for us to actually go in the hospital. Um, to because the last lunch I did it was actually yeah we have to we got to go in there we have to do it and I feel that you know sometimes it's hard to find locations that are handicap accessible yes wheelchair accessible so I you know I really want to work better with that and make it a more inclusive event that folks can come in the VA in the wheelchairs and things like that and enjoy a fun afternoon with us well I, you know for for us um, in my uh, the company Devil Dog you know, our main office is on the second floor and we don't have wheelchair accessibility. And this year we opened a community center on the first floor. It's a lot smaller than the, the main office, but you know, we can fit like around 15 to 25 people. If you, ever, if you ever need that, you're more than welcome to, to use it. At have you time. ever gotten run over by an electric wheelchair? Because I have. Not run over, but my foot. Close, but <laughs> no cigar like that. Yeah. <laughs> they speed. They yeah. speed in those electric wheelchairs. So. Um, well, uh, do you, uh, now we already talked for the Four Bronx Project, your podcast. Is there any other hats that you're wearing that you want to speak about? I think I'm just going to focus on 2024, just keep doing what we're doing and um, keep redirecting resources and services to the people of the Bronx. I'm going to become a little bit more, invite more people in to speak to people and really get them, you know, personal finance, uh, financial literacy, things like that. Um, you know, and just celebrate our small businesses and do small business spotlights like we've been doing for the last year and a half or so. Um, yeah, so that's yeah. my... Small businesses are super important, especially a lot of veterans that try to do entrepreneurship. Right. Um, you know, everything from vending to starting their own business. Um, you know, we like to think that, um, let's say for, the, for what we do with the Bronx Veteran Chamber of Commerce, try to give veterans the opportunities to do some grant writing opportunities, a resource sponsorship, fiscal sponsorship, you know, mm -hmm. give them a legs up. But the problem right. is how do you get them to be more vocal, the audience getting advertisement, you know, for the, the general population. You know, I like to think Vet Talk is one way venue of that happening. Yeah, no, I definitely think going actually to the facility, it will make it a lot easier. Would you agree? Yes. yes I, I, so now that after, you know, COVID, um, they've lifted the restrictions a little bit. Mm -hmm. So now that we're able to go in, I would love to go in with different resources and different companies to come in and speak to them and get them excited for either going back into the workforce or dealing with the PTSD and things that come like that, therapists, things like that definitely um, for the vets this year. Yeah, and you know, uh, a lot of veterans may not feel 
too enthusiastic about the VA hospital and they have their own prejudice against it. But you know, there's other facilities like the vet center, which is away from the you know the the more hospital or the administration part and more separate. That's another right. venue that you can and think about. And then there's other larger nonprofits that you know um, you know like to open their doors to facilitate and you know, working with them. Um, that's what I like to tell um, you know more grassroots organizations that are starting off. You know, um, a lot of the work that individuals in the small grassroots are doing is hands-on groundwork and the larger organizations can be a venue to help them increase not only sy um, you know uh, synergy wise right you know like the the uh, what I always try to preach the American Legion the the VFWs you know they they may be a little bit more strict in the rules wise but we we all have to try to come together to try to for that one cause, and it's to help the veterans. Right, right. Um, I do have some people I would like to shout out, if that's okay. Yeah, go ahead, please. I would love to shout out the Beige Art. Um, it is on McLean Avenue in Yonkers, the Ladies Auxiliary. They have been constant supporters of our events for the vets. They, they are volunteer waitresses at these events. They donate desserts, um, and they're amazing. So I definitely want to shout them out. I do want to shout out uh, Tree Army. They are friends of mine. They are a Bronx-based business that is veteran-owned and operated. It's a husband and wife, and um, they help veterans. It's, it's a tree removal business, landscaping, things like that, but they also um, help veterans get back into the workforce, get back into civilian life, and they mentor them. So I think it's an amazing, amazing company. I think people should be aware of it. So it's, it's Tree Army. Um, and then I do want to shout out a local veteran that I work with on a lot of these things. His name is Danny Manji. Hi, Danny. Um, he is amazing, and he is a constant advocate for all things veteran, and we collaborate on pretty much every veteran event that we do. So I'd I like to, question, to ask a question. The, the first one you mentioned, the... Um the Beige Art? Yes. Mm -hmm. what, what, what organization is that again? They're American Legion. Okay. So only recently did I know that there's a very subgroups to the American Legion. The American Legion, the Sons of American Legions. Mm -hmm. You just mentioned another. The Ladies Auxiliary. The, 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 I only recently heard about them. Yes. Now I know the, 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 the one, the, my legion that's nearby, they have one, but I've never met them personally because they have. They are boss there. ladies, let yeah. me tell you. I need them to come to my house on Saturday morning and just let me clean and <laughs> like pick it up. Yeah, <laughs> they are, they're amazing. They're so generous and I wanted to shout them out. Yeah. And it, you know, once again, the, the main focus is something like, it, maybe these individuals may not have been veterans, but then they have the, the section for Sons of American Legions, which I believe is open to all, is not inclusive for just men. It's open for all. Right. And then the, the legions for um, the ladies auxiliary? It's a ladies auxiliary, so I'm not sure how it works. It's, in, it's a legion, right? Mm -hmm. And then they're, I guess, a, a group within the legion, like mm -hmm. you're saying. Mm -hmm. I don't really know the logistics of that, but but I would assume I, I, there's something I even I need to look into, and I've been doing. Right. You know, I'm a veteran, and I've worked with the veteran organizations for over ten years, and I still don't know everything. So these are, you know, these are key functions and, and things to know right. about what's going on in the community. I also do want to say, if you are a Bronx veteran and um, you do not have clothes, if you don't have shoes, if you don't have basic necessities, please reach out to us. Um, it will be our um, it will be our honor to assist. Can you give them that information one more time? Yes. So um, the Instagram is at the number four Bronx Project, and then you can email me Laura L A U R A the number four Bronx at gmail dot com, and my website is five zero five B X dot org slash four Bronx. So we'll leave off with that. Now you know how to reach Laura. For those uh, that would like to be on Vet Talk. Please feel free to email me at CEO at DevilDogUSAInc.org. If you're an individual or an organization willing to help veterans or the community as a whole, we'll be happy to have you. And as always, God bless America.